Hello Flatties and Globe Defenders, it's Critical Think from Down Under. In this video we're going to take a look at the weight change versus latitude error analysis. And uh, this should be the last video in this series. We'll just take a look at analysing the errors and what it means for the results. I'm going to quickly recap the situation. For the full story you should go watch the previous videos on this subject. But basically we've got here, there we know that there's a weight change versus latitude. <clears throat> well, even if you didn't know, it's, it's predicted by the GLOBE model. Now, this here is how I've graphed the results of my measurements and experiment, and I've conglomerated measurements from other sources, from other people. So the blue line here is the prediction of what the weight would be in, in relation to a latitude. And these colored dots are the data points that were collected by actually going out and doing measurements all over the world. And so as shown in a previous video, that's uh, a 98% explanation for those measurements. Now, if we have a look at the flat earth, so the flat earth model predicts 500 gram mass will weigh 500 grams. And the measurements out in the real world are not agreeing with that. Now we're going to take this a little bit further and um, do a little bit of an error analysis just to show that what we've done is a very very good match for the model of the WGS 84 rotating globe model and that the observations match that which are predicted within the bounds of the errors that I've calculated here. One more thing here is that even though I've gone to a lot of trouble to explain the, the experiment compared real world results and measurements against uh, some glow models and a flat earth model, there's still some flat earthers that are trying to argue their way out of it, been listening to a certain person too much. And um, Flat Earth Awakening says, I'm assuming correlation to a spinning ball earth. And because I'm assuming it, I'm using it to prove the, the spin of the earth. Now, really, that absolutely makes zero sense. Because if we go back to the only thing, go back to this graph, the only thing we're assuming here is that if, if the, uh, this is the assumption here, if the Earth was a spinning globe with the WGS84, our measurements would line up with that line. So that's a hypothesis, if you like, a guess or an assumption. But if the measurements don't line up with that line, if we go out and measure something and it doesn't line up with our line, then our assumption is false. As is clearly stated and shown here, here is the assumption uh, we've assumed that the earth is not spinning, not round, it's flat. And if we went out and done the measurements in nature and they all lined up with that, we'd say, good, yes, it could be flat. But no, look, see? So you can't prove it's flat by assuming it's flat. The same way you can't prove it's spinning by assuming it's spinning. This experiment tests the hypothesis and the flat earth fails. Anyway, so I looked at the, what are the possible sources of error? And the biggest one here is the weighing technique. In my mind, I've, I've done a few personal investigations following the actual experiment because as you can see in the earlier videos, I weighed several times at the one location. Now that should give the same result. There should be no variation. 
but there was. And so what, you know, what might be causing that? And there are certain, you should have to be, you actually have to be very careful when you're weighing, but none of the people involved in this experiment um, would have taken all the precautions necessary. So some better than others, but uh, I now have some techniques for weighing that that give me a much more consistent result. And but it was for, it, for me, I think it was fortunate that I did this. When you're at the same location and taking the weight of your mass at the same location, you should get the same result every time. And if you don't, then that's how you can actually measure the error. So um, if I go back to my graph there, you'll notice that there's one point. Now this one was way out. The one down there, it's seven degrees. Now I think actually that that was a weighing error. And if, if I was to do this again, I'd be very careful with my weighing. And I've now got a protocol I can follow that that this sort of thing is, is not going to happen. But it did happen and I've left it in just um, to be consistent. We go back to our possible sources of error. Now we can also be affected by breezes. If you have a bit of a breeze blowing on top of the scales, that can make a, a quite a bit of difference. Uh, you're supposed to have the scales warm up for a minute. I didn't always do that. I don't know if the others always did that. And so there's the, all these little things that can happen and they happened to me and I got at the same location on different days, I got different readings. And there's also with the scales, there could be a calibration drift. The scales may drift over time. And I have noticed that that, that does happen. And so if you take a reading on at one place and then two weeks later a reading another place, there may have been a calibration drift in the scales in that time. And temperature variations, now I'm not saying that temperature variations are going to uh, affect the weight. Well, you could never measure it anyway. It's something like milli, milligrams if, if anything at all, milligrams over a kilogram, it's, it's minuscule. But the temperature variations could have an effect on the scales and they could cause the scales to read differently. It's not that it's going to cause uh, a change of weight. So there's the weak link here really is the scales and the person handling them. Um, with the weights too, you're not supposed to handle the weights. You've got to keep them clean. Even a little bit of moisture on the weight can make it way heavier. So there's all these precautions that should be taken. They weren't taken. And so my measurements varied at the same location. Now, Flatties have also mentioned something like density or barometric pressure. And yes, this does have an effect on the weight, but it's less than 0.01% these sorts of things and that's like a pressure difference of zero pressure to 14.7 psi one atmosphere of pressure and really I, my measurement error is like two percent how am i going to notice a 0 0.01 percent local gravity variations are also less than 0 0.01 percent but they do have uh, measurement, they do have pieces of equipment that can measure that. They're very expensive, $70,000 or so, but they're used to in mining and geological studies. So there you have it. Now, in, an, in my very first video on this topic, I averaged out all my readings at one location because that's a statistical way of saying, well, what's the average? I'm getting 
these random variations in my weights, I don't know why, it's legit to average them out and say, this is the weight I'm going to take at that location. And when I did that, I get an extremely good fit with the model, a 99.9% .9 correlation. And um, I think that's, that's a great indication. It just shows you that if we take away those random effects, then the model should match a much better than 98%. And maybe you'll get a chance to repeat this in the future with being much more careful with the weighing. How I worked out the error in, so I've made a lot of measurements at one location and I've Take it, I've worked out the standard deviation of those measurements. So how you work that out, the sigma standard deviation is the sum of the difference between the measurement and the mean of the measurements and um, take the square of those differences, add them all up and divide by the number of samples. And for all the samples that I collected and where I did several measurements at one location, I've worked out that um, my standard deviation, this is an approximate standard deviation because I've uh, the average at each location was different, but it's still taking the difference between the sample and the average. And I divided by the total number of some of the squares divided by the total number of samples. And I worked out an approximate standard deviation, which is 0 0.0443. And that I'm going to call my, it seemed, I'll, I'll show a little bit later that that is a random, uh, each of those samples are random, randomly distributed more or less. So it's a valid standard deviation. And the three sigma, which means that 99.7% of your samples should be within 0.1328 if you have that kind of error in your weighing. And just to explain again, I took all the samples that I weighed, I worked out the errors from the mean, and then I got an approximation for the what would be the standard deviation now let's take a look at the data again with the rotating spheroid. I've drawn three lines here. The, the blue one in the middle is what the model predicts. The lighter blue one at the top is a three sigma line away from that one and the bottom line is a three sigma line. So all your readings, if this was a legit if this was you want this model to be a good fit and you you have this weighing error of around um, two percent in this case which is that that weighing error that I measured by getting different readings then 99.7 percent of your readings should lie between these two points and that's a very good fit for your model and you can see this is true, except for this one here, which I've mentioned before, which I think was a really a gross measurement error and, and should never have been included. But nonetheless, it's still very, very close to that three sigma. And that one up there is right on it. Now, if you compare that with the rotating sphere, which is a perfect sphere and not a spheroid, you say you see there are some quite a few points outside the lines so there's and a few more points right on it but one two three points outside the line and that tells you that again that the rotating sphere is close but not not good enough and we look at the flat earths we take all right, what's our error in measurement? That means we should 
be in this band here if the earth were flat all of the measurements should be within this band and they're not so taking into account the error in measurement the earth's still not flat the other the other little metric that we can look at is what's called the residuals if you go back and take a look at these graphs you'll see the middle line uh, the residuals is the difference between the dot and the middle line so for each of the models you can see the green one is the WGS 84 they're all very close to the center and you'll notice that these ones the non-rotating ones are very very spread out from the residuals are big and they're skewed they have a pattern to them which is bad I'll, I'll separate them out a little bit more so when you do this r squared analysis you should look at the residuals which i've plotted for the wgs84 and there should be no pattern to the residuals and they should be more or less evenly scattered and that's exactly what we see uh, which is a very very good result the models predicting very well and the 98 percent explanation of your model for those uh, measurements is valid because the residuals are small and fairly evenly spread out if we take a look at the residuals now for the rotating sphere you can see that there's a bias down the bottom end here and this this and this tells you that there's something that we didn't account for when we looked at the rotating perfect sphere and in this case we know what it is we know that we didn't account for the oblateness that it's slightly fatter at the equator and that's that that's that there causing that skew of those residuals and we look at a non-rotating spheroid and you can see the skew is more pronounced there's definitely a downward slope on those residuals so that's a, a not such a good fit there and non-rotating sphere very very similar but worse and flat flat earth model the residuals have a clear downward trend so that's all the all the error analysis residual analysis and uh, you can see that taking into account the observed errors the WGS 84 model is a very good fit comes up smelling like roses really and the flat earth is a stinking pile of you know what okay so that's um a, that's all i need to say on this video i just wanted to present that error analysis just so that people get the idea that how the errors work how to analyze them and what they mean so i hope you uh, enjoyed that and i think this will be the last video on on this particular experiment Thanks for watching.